I'm excited to have you again for a session, an exciting season of spiritual upliftment. We are in a period of spiritual emphasis where we are praying, seeking the face of the Lord. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 10 verse 12, sow to yourself righteousness, okay? Reap in mercy. It says it is time to break forth our fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord till it comes and it rains righteousness on us. So this is a period where we are seeking the face of the Lord, when we are seeking the face of the Lord and believing him that every promise that is hanging over us, his power will release for our physical experiences in the name of Jesus Christ. So today, I'd like us to go further on that tangent with something very practical, something you need to express, something I believe should actually help your confidence in your spiritual adventure for you to know that you have come to an experience of results. Where the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 1, there are things we have heard, things we have seen, that you come to the point where there are things you handle, that you can boldly say that God answers prayers. And I believe that will be a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. So, we are praying again. Our series this season is on evolving with prayers. Evolving with prayers. Again, that Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 says, break forth your fallow ground, which means evolve into new spirit, spiritual and supernatural experiences. Evolve into new dimensions. Become better. Become bigger. Experience more blessings. Break forth into new potentials, new possibilities. Your fallow ground represents, you know, potentials you can have, opportunities you can use, the promises of God, the things that were working before that you left off because you could not cope, because the season changed. The Lord is saying to someone here, you are getting restored back into relevance. And I say that to you again, you are getting restored again into relevance you are coming back to a point where you operate at your peak performance break forth into new experiences new possibilities new uh, uh, places new platforms connect our new divine connections break forth into your follow ground and today i have a charge and my charge is simple it's a charge on consistency it's a charge on reality it's a charge on results inspired from Exercises chapter 11 verse 3. We'll read that in a moment. And my charge today is very simple. Fill your spiritual clouds to a tipping point. Fill your spiritual clouds to a tipping point. Exercises 11 verse 3 says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. I am suggesting here that we pray to the point of release. You feel your spiritual clouds to the point the experiences you are having, the feelings you are getting, the expectations you are having become physical results, become the realities that you are celebrating. Feel your spiritual clouds to tipping point. There's a reality we need to get up spiritual efficiency. Efficiency basically means that you use minimal efforts to get maximum results. Now, our prayer is a, is a strategy that God has given us to move the power that creates things, to move the power of God into position, to move resources, to transport, to shift things in the spirit. The prophet Elijah was praying in 1 Kings chapter 18. There was famine, there was drought. There were no you know, tangible economic resources as they were. The Bible says he put his head in between his, uh, his knees. He looked towards the sea. In the east, the story is in 1 Kings 18, for verse 41 to verse 45, and he prayed, and there was movement. There was a wind. The clouds gathered, and over the territory where he wanted the release of blessing, God caused the rain to fall. I am suggesting here, our prayers can create movement for us in the spirit. I don't know what you believe God for. The Bible says, for instance, he that will come, will come and will not tarry. If you are expecting uh, uh, people you want to connect with, you are expecting somebody to marry, you are expecting opportunities and resources to come to you, understand that your minimal effort in 
praying can move the power of God all over the universe. Wherever your resources are, the power of God can pull them in your direction just by your prayer. That is the principle that the prophet Elijah set in motion for us. We can use our prayers for uh, a spiritual efficiency. Letting us understand that this season, I'm suggesting here, this season of our spiritual emphasis, let's use it to attain spiritual efficiency. Let's use it to get more done spiritually. Let's also realize that there's a reality of spiritual inefficiency. How do I mean? For instance, in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 14, the Bible says, uh, when you are boasting without result, hear this, you are like cloud without rain. What it's telling us is this, you can actually have expectations that fail. You can have what looks like it that eventually is not it. You can have processes that are truncated. You can have things that start and as if that are going to happen and they just don't happen. You know what it's like. When you have a cloud, you see <laughs> the, the, the atmosphere becomes a little dark. You, you blow off the, the, the sunshine. Then you hear sound, you know, of thunder, you know, crap, 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 as if it's going to rain. And out of the blues, the sun starts shining again. <laughs> the rain refuses to, to fall. And the sun keeps drying the crops and the ground becomes added just because there's no shower of blessing. Yours will not be like that in the name of Jesus Christ. This season of spiritual emphasis, it will be a great opportunity for you, to, for you to become efficient in your spiritual experiences in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm suggesting here that you pray, that I pray, that we pray like Elijah did. Elijah shows us a, a, a classical example of filling the clouds to a tipping point. Elijah, I read verses 45. 4 and 45 of 1 Kings 3, the Bible says, then it came to pass this seventh time. I want you to see that. Because the Elijah's example shows us we can intensify our spiritual exercises through prayer and we can continue, here it is, continue with it without a break till you come to tipping points. Just like it tells us in Hosea 10, 12, you seek the Lord till he rains righteousness on us. So I read again 1 Kings from 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 42 and 45. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops. Now, this was a conversation between Elijah, excuse me, Elijah and his servants when they were they were watching out for the tipping point for when the clouds will come to a point when they begin to release what the heavens has been holding back. Verse 45 says, now it happened in the meantime. I want you to see that. There's, there's a time investment in prayer before you expect the power of God to begin to manifest for you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain not regular rain heavy rain and so ahab rode away and went to jesus now this gives us the concept of tipping point elijah started with a scenario a situation where there was no rain no water <laughs> Whether in clouds, a cloudy form, whether, you know, like you have dew, in small, small measures or in abundant measures, no rain, okay? Then it came to an understanding there could be rain. There's a possibility of a change. There is need to set a process in motion. And that's why he says in verse 42, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I can feel like a season is changing. I know there's a possibility that I can experience a new reality. Okay, so I, I, I just know that God could do it. God is about to do it. And so what does he do? It sets the process in motion. It goes to the right place where there's no distraction. He got himself ready to do it until he experiences it. He was ready for a long haul. He was ready to do it without a break, without a distraction, because he said to Ahab, go, 
go and eat and drink. This is a season of spiritual emphasis for me. I don't know about you. I believe that God is bringing us to this season because he wants to do something new. That's why he says in Hosea 10, 12, if you know that there is a new dimension, if you know that you want to break forth your fallow ground, it is time to seek the Lord till he reigns righteousness. These are the right things begin to happen. I pray that this season, whatever is wrong with you, God will resolve for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So the, the tipping point concept that Elijah introduces to us is to understand that you can pray to a critical threshold. You know that. A thick, critical threshold when the result you expect begin to come and they become unstoppable. Nothing can stop it. Why? It has passed the threshold, the point where any force can stop it. I'm suggesting to you here, if you have felt like there's a contrary wind blowing against you like the disciples experienced in Matthew chapter 14 verse 44, if you feel that there are forces holding you back, when you push in prayer because it is time to seek the Lord, hear this, when God asks you to seek him, he wants to respond or answer you. When you, you know, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, we have this confidence that when we pray according to his will, he will hear, he will answer. When we do things, when God wants us to do them, we are guaranteed that the results will come. So when even Elijah's prayer was by divine inspiration, because in verse 1 of 1 Kings 18, God said to him, Go and present yourself to Ahab. And he said, I will send rain. So when you do things, when God commands them, you can be sure he will command victory for you. And I believe this session, God will command victory for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have Elijah praying without rain. He started praying. Then he prayed to the point there was not just rain, there was an abundance of rain. Abundance in the sense that nothing could stop it, nothing could hold it back. Even the prophets of Baal could not hold it back. So a tipping point is when you, you have come to a point where any small change that you create will give you big results because you have passed that critical threshold where any force can hold back what you have pushed forth. And I believe that God will give you that experience in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why when our Lord Jesus Christ was going to help the disciples, he said something to them in Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. When that power came, it was what we call, uh, that, that's the day we call it the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. When it came, it came as a wind, as a rushing mighty wind. It came so suddenly, hear this, no force could stop it anymore. It was even beyond the, the ability of those who were praying to, to hold it back. Even Elijah could no longer hold back the rain that it cost through his prayer because the force that he released was more than his person. It became a point where everyone was involved. Heaven opened up and the rain was not a small measure, it was heavy. I pray God will give you heavy weight blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Now the implication of that, the implication of that tipping point is very simple. You will not bring yourself to a point where after it's like Elijah, the moment the heavens open, anything you needed at that point becomes easy because you have crossed the threshold of struggle. You have crossed the threshold of stress. You have crossed the threshold where the enemy can hold back your effort anymore. You have created a momentum where the force that is coming, it, it, it's like a tornado. A tornado is more than a regular wind. It's not a breeze. You can't stamp on its path. It takes everything away that's on its path. That is what it means to come to a tipping point. The energy you generate is more than your size. It has taken a life of its own because there's, there's an influence that is bigger than you that is controlling things in your favor. You will experience more in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you get to tipping point, you don't make the same big effort you used to make. Now it's small effort, maximum results. So you come to spiritual efficiency. For example, in John chapter, chapter 11, John chapter 11, in verse 33, Jesus was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. They told him Lazarus was ill. He waited <laughs> three days, and the fourth day he went. And by the time 
he was he was approaching the city they were telling him he was too late Lazarus, Lazarus was now dead D-E-A-D. he was sick before you see when you understand spiritual principles problems don't mesmerize you you why just like in John chapter 6 he was going to multiply bread he was asking his disciples where do we get the resources and they were still making postulations, calculations, you know, another person, you know, maybe the computer, those days they didn't have their tablets. And the man says he himself knew what he was going to do. So when you understand the, the principle of spiritual efficiency, even when you feel dull in your spirit, you know how to start the process again because you have done, done it before. My prayer is that this experience you are going to encounter today will equip you spiritually such that you'll always bounce back every time you feel drawn back in spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. So for Jesus, it looked late to raise Lazarus. The first day he had to go. And in verse 33 of John chapter 11, the Bible says he was groaning. He groaned in the spirit. He was doing heavy spiritual work, making every deposit. He was doing, mm, he was pushing hard. But hear this, in verse 43 of John chapter 11, when he got to the tomb of Lazarus and he told them to roll away the stone, he was no longer making that major effort. He was not man, now, he was now making minor efforts. How do I mean? He was no longer groaning and supplicating. He was declaring. He just got there as a superstar. <laughs> Pardon my language. Lazarus, come forth. You know, the Bible says in Job 22, verse 29, you will decree a thing and it shall be established. You no, know, you are going on the way. Someone, you know, decided that he will hold back your favor. You make a degree and it happens. Listen to me. That short proclamation is an extension of the reality of the deposit you have made in the spirit. You don't just start making proclamations when you have not prayed, when you don't have a heavyweight anointing and authority in spirit. So you build up before heaven can give up. Can I say that to you again? You build up before the heavens can give up. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3, I believe verse 19, that until the time when the heavens were about to release, things were being held back. I believe your clouds will come to tipping point and heaven will rain things that will put life back in perspective and bring you prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying to you again, fill your spiritual clouds to tipping point. Make sure you pray to a point of release. If the clouds be full of rain, you know what he's saying? Whatever a man sows, that is shall rain. You feel the clouds, then heaven will reward you with more than you filled it with. The abundance is coming to you. I, I hear for someone here, there shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing. Oh, uh, uh, Holy Spirit. As, as, as I speak that song, there's someone here. Something has been holding down your resources. Someone, I don't know whether it's a company or an individual, owes you money in seven figures. You have done everything you know to do, but right now, you are even borrowing money to survive, and you are about to give up because you have done all you know to do. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to this word. For three and a half years, there was no rain. Elijah, in one sweep, in one spot, in one place, with seven attempts of prayer, changed, changed, changed immediately what had not happened for three and a half years. The Lord is asking me to tell you, if you can just fill your cloud in one day, in 24 hours, everything holding back what belongs to you will release it in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord honor your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, quickly, to attain your tipping point, to come to the point where your clouds become full, where your heavens open, where there's a release that you can handle and celebrate, what are some of the things that you should do? The first thing I'll say to you is to make sure that when you want to do this, you don't change style too much. <laughs> you don't repeat too many prayer points. You focus on, you see, you, re, you repeat the same effort often. That's a system to uh, attain a uh, uh, tipping point. 
Let me give you an example of how Jesus prayed. Hear this. In the garden of Gethsemane, just before he went to the cross. He went to the same place. He told the disciples to watch within one hour. The second time, they didn't watch. The third time. But the Bible gives us an insight. That for the three times Jesus went back to pray, he was praying the same prayer point. I'd like to read Matthew 26, verse 44. Matthew 26, 44 says, So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time. Hear this. Saying the same word. Saying the same word. I, I want you to see that. Jesus was not changing prayer points. <laughs> the same words, the same prayer point. Why? When you become focused, you go far in the realm of the spirit. I'll say that again. When you become focused, when you have a focal point, you can open the heavens of time and you can travel far and faster in the realm of the spirit. So the same words, if you want to attain to pinpoint, I'm saying here, repeat the same effort. Have a regular time that you pray. <laughs> have a regular period you pray. Have, you know, a regular ambience. Your, your, the situation around you, your furniture and all that, uh, the coolness, everything. Make sure you repeat the same condition as much as possible. And if there's a challenge you have on your mind, use the same prayer point. Don't change it. So that brings you to tipping point quickly. And also make sure that anything you do, you, you don't, you don't, break it until you experience what you're looking for. Don't have any significant break. Jesus had a short break, went to the disciples, came back immediately. Don't, don't leave off the prayer because you want to go for business. Have the period for the prayer. Now for, for Elijah, in verse 43 of that first Kings chapter 18, the Bible says he kept saying to his servant, go and check. And in verse 43, the Bible says, the seventh time, the seventh time of checking consistently and constantly, he found what he was looking for. So any time you are breaking, it's not time to be distracted. It's time to be focused. And like I said, always have a regular time that you do it. And if you can, a good way to also fast track your attainment and experience of tipping point is to involve more people as many more people as you can get involved, just make sure that they're involved. Now, this was a major experience that, you know, uh, the disciples, the apostles had on the day of Pentecost. Now, I did a comparative story and I thought of something. Think of how the day of Pentecost came. The Bible says, uses one, two words. It was sudden. Then there was speed. The wind came suddenly and it was mighty. It rushed in. Maybe I should read that to Acts chapter 2. I read verses 1 and 2. When the day of Pentecost, Pentecost had fully come, they were all, note that, note that. I said you have to involve more people. They were all with one accord in one place. I may also say with one spirit because the same spirit filled all of them. Verse 2 says, and suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, the thing I want you to see here is the fact that when more people were praying, the result came unexpectedly. The result came rushing in. The result was accelerated. There was speed. Compare that to that first Kings chapter 18, verse 43, where Elijah was praying and he kept telling his servant to go and check. So there's a system where you are trying to fill the cloud yourself because you're praying alone and you are checking. Why are you checking so often? Because the result is slow in coming. Why on the day of Pentecost did they not have to check? Why was it sudden and it came rushing in with speed? Because because of the mass effect of multiple people praying, they were all together in one place where they were praying. They generated what is called momentum. So anytime you need to get to tipping point quickly, you know what I'm suggesting? Have a friend you pray with. If two or three of you shall agree on touching anything, have a congregation you pray with. It will be a huge mistake. 
When you want to compare individual prayer, the energy generated with corporate prayer. And that is why when it's time to pray like this series we're running on Evolving with Prayers, don't miss this online experience. Use the time to pray. Use the time to plug into open heavens like Elijah prayed at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. When you pray at the time when all the saints are praying, it's like an express way or highway, the paths are clearer because there's more positive force, more energy, more vehemence of the spirit, more momentum of the frequency of the spirit that is difficult to hold back. Imagine a train coming at us with a speed train and a truck or a car. You cannot stop them at the same rate because of the mass that of the, the weight that is kind and the velocity. That's why it's called momentum. Momentum is when, when you have you know, mass and speed at the same time. My prayer is that God will connect you with people that will increase your spiritual momentum and efficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm suggesting here this season, look for friends of like minds you can pray with. People that can stir you up. Iron sharpens iron, and a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. This just this past week, I was praying with my friends. We pray regularly on Monday, and it was, it was fantastic. I felt my spirit lift. I pray, but when iron begins to sharpen iron, listen to me, the heavens open faster, and you come to your tipping point where, like we said, Exodus 11.3, if the clouds be full of rain, just look at an hypothetical case of one person pouring water from a bucket into, say, a 1,000 liter tank. I, I think they used to teach us in arithmetic. If it will take one person to go to pour that water 1,000 times, how many times will it take 10 people? You can be sure that. <laughs> You just divide by 10, it, it, you just reduce the time and the effort to take. Basically, that's the principle here. Now, the issue now is, if you now know how to attain that tipping point, where the clouds will release, where the clouds will release, where heaven opens up, where you experience prosperity, where you experience favor, where you experience on time answers to your desires. How do you gauge? How do you know when the tipping point is there, when you are experiencing, when you are close to it when it's here. You know, like Jesus says, you know when the season is about to change. There's a change in the clouds, in the atmosphere. How do you know? One of the things I'll say, first of all, is that you will see and you will feel the signs. You, you, will, you will know when burdens are lifted from you, when you begin to feel or you have peace of mind. So it comes as a feeling. It comes as these things you see. For Elijah, he kept saying to his servant in 1 Kings chapter 18, and like we read from verse 43, like I mentioned, he said, the Bible says the seventh time, the servant saw a cloud, the size of a man's hand. He saw something small. <laughs> Look at it. Out of the bigness, the whiteness of the horizon or of the sky. How wide the sky is. A man's inner eyes could only see a small hand. Ah, may God not give you a small mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Bottom line, it's not something, okay? So uh, the major thing is you begin to see signs. Your dreams change. Your feelings change. For instance, you have peace of mind. Let me read to you Isaiah 55 verse 12, where the Bible says, For you shall go out with joy, that is a feeling, and you will be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all, all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. All the field of the trees. What are the field, the, the trees of the field? What the, are the mountains and the hills? Hear this. They represent things that normally should disturb you, should obstruct you, should stress you, should distract you, should make you struggle. And all of a sudden, they are cooperating with you. The trees that should block your path, they are singing and moving. The mountains, they are skipping. All of a sudden, your dreams are changing. You, you are no longer having bad dreams. You begin to see yourself in the palace. You begin to see yourself in the posh part of your city. You begin to see yourself not living in that one room where you don't even have the temperature control. You are not happy. You begin to see yourself in your own property with your own swimming pool. You begin to see yourself in your own new car. Your expectations change because your imagination has changed. That's what happens. You know that you have crossed a threshold in the, in the spirit where everything negative becomes positive and they are coming in quick successions. 
may God give you a new mindset in the name of Jesus Christ. Then you also check the frequency, okay, of, of, of how the flow happens. Check the quantity, check the quantum of the blessing. That's how you will know you have reached a tipping point. Like I said, when you get to a tipping point, a small effort will give you an abundant result. For instance, the Bible says, the rain that came when Elijah prayed, there was a heavy rain. That's abundant measure. You know that you have reached tipping point. The clouds have released their rain. The cloud is not shower. The, the, the cloud holds a mass volume of water and they begin to release the abundance of blessings. And for instance, it also says in that Hosea chapter 10 verse 11, when you come to the time to seek the Lord, the Bible did not say it will give or it will drop righteousness. It says it will rain righteousness. Now, how does it rain for? A rain covers a wide space, a wide horizon. What it means is this, so many aspects of your life just receive a momentum of positive and pleasant experiences. Your business, your job, your family, your children, your health, everything about you. The rain covers everything. May you have all round success that cannot be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And make sure uh, that you also watch out for this. Engaging your tipping point, you watch out for your motivation. The moment you begin to get highly motivated, highly excited, you have not seen, you have not, you have not handled the blessing. Now, for instance, in First Kings to play team, Elijah had only heard a servant say, I can see love, the size, the, a small size, the size of a man's hand. Elijah immediately became motivated. What did he do? He gathered up his loins. He began to run. The mom says in verse 46 of that first 18, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. Hear this. The rain had not started, but he had been become motivated. You, uh, he started running. That's what I'm saying here. Once your motivation becomes heightened, you know that grace is, is flowing. You know that heavens have opened up. You know that the clouds have released the rain. It is already set in motion. The Bible says in Psalm 110 verse 3, in the days of his power, his people shall become volunteers. His people shall be willing. You will have favor. You will have people cooperating with you. Why? You have come to your tipping point. I believe God is bringing you there even as you pray today in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why in Acts chapter 2 verse 45, the Bible says God was adding to them daily. Every day. <laughs> there was just something flowing to them. I, I believe... Oh, I, 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 I think it's just time to pray, okay? <laughs> you can't talk about tipping point without praying. Elijah prayed before the hand of the Lord came upon him. I believe God's hand to come upon you. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, it's time to get into the mood. Elijah said something to Ahab, go away from Mount Carmel. I need space. I need an environment that will inspire the release of power in me. I, I want you to be, you just please, if you are sitting comfortably <laughs> on your sofa in the house, step up, Okay? <laughs> Get yourself in the mood and start by showing gratitude to God. Can you just say to the Lord, thank you. Let me read it, Psalm 68 verse 11. It says, blessed be the Lord who daily, who daily loads us with benefit, the God of our salvation. Can you express your gratitude to the Lord? Say, Lord, thank you for changing our spiritual season for more frequent pleasant experiences. Thank you, Lord, for changing our spiritual season into a season where we are experiencing more and more frequent pleasant experiences. Every day, a daily loads us with this benefit. Whatever God is doing now is saying to you, your experience of, free, of pleasant you know, uh, 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 situations of favor, of answers to prayers, of, of ease, of peace of mind, or of sound mind, your favor, your season of sun as well at work, your promotion is easy, your investment is coming as planned, that season will be frequent. Every day, there are benefits of serving God. Thank you. Thank him for that season of frequent, pleasant experiences. We bless the name of the Lord. And I'd like us to sow a seed of prayer for our nation, Nigeria. We sow a seed of prayer. I want you to please join me to do this. The Bible says, in Isaiah 59, I read verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Hear this. When the enemy comes in like a flood, 
the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Our prayer for our nations that God, O oh God of heaven, raise a standard of security in our nation, in Nigeria, and stop the tide of frequent occurrences of threats to life. That tide of frequent occurrence of threats to life. Let God stop it. When the enemy comes in a measure that is overwhelming, our security threat is overwhelming the government right now, the, the Bible says there will be a standard. We can't handle it, but grace can lift up our prayers to a level that there's a barrier to the flood of the enemy. It's like you dam it. Our prayers can dam every flood of insecurity, of banditry, of terrorism and threat to life. So we stand and receive the mercy of the Lord as we pray. Lord, raise a standard against the flood that is causing the, the, the blood of men to be shed in our nation. Thank you, Most High God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And now, I'll read verse, uh, excuse me, Psalm 1 verse 2. It says, but his delight, please know that, his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. I'll also read Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 where the Bible says, your words were found and I hate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I'm called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Our prayer is on our passion for the word. Because once you have the word, then you have life, you have light, you have the spirit, you have enablement, you have energy. So you will pray and say, Lord, put a fresh passion for your word in my heart. A fresh passion for your word. That is, is that Jeremiah verses, verse, uh, Jeremiah 15, 16 says, your word is the rejoicing of my heart. That I have a passion. I will desire your word that I will attract I will make deposit. I will not just receive your word. I will retain it so that when I need it. It says, for instance, in Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 16, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. So when you need grace, you can flow. And you know that the word of God brings grace to us. It says in Acts 20, 32, I commend it to God and to the word of his grace. Once you have passion for the word, you have an attraction for his grace. I said that again. Once you have passion for the word, you have generated an attraction for grace. You have generated an attraction for mercy. So that when you need grace, it flows. Lord, your word will be a delight in my heart. That's what Psalm 1 verse 2 says. Put the passion for your word in my heart. I receive your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you will still pray. You know, read from that Psalm 68 verse 11, where the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with his benefit. You are going to pray for the full manifestations of the things you're expecting from the Lord. I read it also Psalm 1 verse 3. It says, that is after the word of God is a delight to you. Verse 3 of Psalm 1 says, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever you do shall prosper. I'm sure you are saying a loud amen. So you pray and say, Lord, bring me to the full manifestations of a new season, a season of regular, daily, exciting, supernatural experiences. That you come to a season where every day you have exciting, supernatural experiences. Can you pray to the Lord? Every day you have exciting, says every day. As you delight in the Lord of the Lord, you are like a tree planted by rivers of water. You don't wither. You don't have a dull spiritual season. You go from glory to glory. You be like the righteous whose path is ever shining. You never miss a new season. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you will pray to the Lord. That season should bring you to what the Bible says in Amos chapter 9 verse 13. I'd like to read that. It says, Behold, the days are coming. And I believe the days have come for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the tread of graves him who sow seed. The mountain shall drip, drip talks about abundance. The mountain shall, mountain shall drip with sweet wine and all his will flow. There shall be a flow. So you pray to the Lord for harvest and say, Lord, 
bring me into a season of multiple harvest. Bring me multiple harvests of your divine promises as I seek you this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says the mountains will drip. There will be a flow. Constantly money is flowing. Remember Exercises 11.3. Once the clouds will be full of rain, they will empty themselves. God is saying to someone who is praying right now, you have come to a dimension where nothing will stop your flow, where nothing will stop pleasant experiences. He says the mountains are drip with sweet wine. You will experience good. Everything about you will be good. Like Isaiah says, I, my family will experience, we will eat the good of the land. No bad experience. Insecurity is not your portion. In the name of the Lord, the Lord will be resolving things before they get to you or before they get at you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And can you add one more prayer? Can you pray to the Lord to live above the flesh? Galatians 5.17 says, the flesh lost against the spirit. You know what that is telling you? When you try to push in spirit, there are forces that will interfere with you getting to your tipping point. That will not allow your plans to be full. The flesh will be drawing back your energy, not wanting you to come to the seventh point like Elijah when the, the heavens broke open and the rain became abundant and heavy. You will pray for the grace, the strength, supernatural strength to live above the flesh. Galatians 5, 17 again, the flesh lost against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. One is contrary to the other. Can you pray to the Lord to strengthen your spirit, to fill you with the Holy Spirit to operate above the flesh? Can you pray that to the Lord? Lord, transform me with your, with your fresh infilling of the spirit to live continually beyond, to live continually above the pool of the flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will be filled with the spirit. Personally, individually, I will live above the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, the Bible says, When they had prayed, they, they were filled with the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit. When they had prayed, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And hear this, they began to speak the word of the Lord with boldness. That's transformation with the infilling of the Spirit that they obtained through prayer. You are getting yours in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit will fill you. You will become a better version of who you are. Spiritually, you become some. I feel like God is saying to someone here, you'll be excited with yourself. You will know that your true elements, your true version is manifested. You, you will be in the Spirit. You will begin to sing. Your, your spiritual skills are gaining momentum. Your talents are being refined. The Holy Spirit is breathing upon your skill. You begin to work with more intelligence. Men will reach you as being more credible because the power of God is coming upon your person. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will bless the name of the Lord. Can you appreciate the name of the Lord? Can you just appreciate Him and thank Him? You have only received prayer points. I'm sure you'll be praying after this time. Out. Just thank Him. Let Him know you appreciate the fact that He has brought you to a time not just to seek the Lord, but a time when your class will be full to a tipping point to a release where it says in Hosea 10, 12, it will rain. Release what is right. It will release righteousness. I appreciate the name of the Lord. We read from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 12, where the Bible says, you shall go out with joy. You shall be led out with peace. I believe, God, that the power of the Spirit is bringing you to a point where you enjoy peace of mind, where the desires in your heart come to fruition on time, where you begin to see things change as quickly as you need them. Hear this, your heavens will not be short. This season, there will be a sun with showers, with showers, greater and greater levels of showers of blessing. You will testify that the power of God works in the name of Jesus Christ. I hear for someone here, new things begin to happen within the name of the Lord. You will celebrate a new season. You will celebrate a major change. Elijah's prayer helped him to celebrate a change after three and a half years. Your prayer today will not just gather clouds 
you will experience spiritual efficiency. God will be responding to you on time. Elijah stayed on the mount and before he left the place of prayer, the power started showing up. I'm praying for someone here. Each time you pray, before you leave the place of prayer, there'll be a witness in your heart. There'll be a stirring in your spirit. There'll be a sign through a phone call and email physically that your heaven is tipping and grace is flowing in the name of Jesus Christ. Enjoy showers of blessing in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. I feel excited in my spirit. I actually feel I continue this, but I also know that God has breathed into you. Life has come into you. Your energy in spirit has risen. And may God grant you momentum. I pray for someone here. God will connect you with people that will stir you because like you said, iron sharpens iron. People of like mind, they will help you get lifted to higher dimensions and experience in the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wow, wow, wow. God bless you. Now, Luke chapter 1 verse 80 says, The child grew and the grace of God was upon him. And God brought him to the point where he was projected. He was revealed to Israel. Talking about John the Baptist, I'm suggesting to someone here, God will bring you to a point where personally, personally, you will always experience new divine projection. May the Lord honor your prayers. And before you leave, please don't forget, always make sure you understand the principle of the tipping point. You have to first release something before heaven releases abundance. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. And you can bring it down to a financial level where nobody sees you. Elijah was praying when he asked Ahab to go. Nobody sees you right now. You can as well decide to just get offline without giving to the Lord. It's still fine. Whatever a man sows, God cannot be mocked. Amen. Make sure you are not just praying spiritually. You are sowing seeds to bring a physical dimension of your spiritual effort. As you give to the Lord, grace will multiply to you. God bless you. Don't forget, you are evolving with, with prayers. So don't stop praying. Grace and peace to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me online again today. The next time we meet, your heavens will be tipping more and more in Jesus' name. God bless you.